Good evening and praise God. Welcome to another edition of Time Out with Tony Dyson. And of course, this is Tony Dyson. For truly it is a blessing to be before you once again in the mighty name of Jesus. For God has seen fit once again for me to come to this place to lift up his name. I do truly hope that these editions of Time Out with Tony Dyson is truly helping someone strengthen their walk with God. For it is not about me and it's, it's all about the kingdom of God and what would God have us do and the power that he has given unto us. On today, we're going to talk a little bit about mercy. And the thing about mercy is whatever we have done, the mistakes that we have made, the things that we could have done but didn't strive to do, we let the flesh take over and we did what the flesh wanted to do. See, the thing about that is, is when you wake up on the next day, you have another chance. For the Bible says that God's grace and mercies are renewed daily. So when you wake up on that next day, you're no longer living off of yesterday's grace. For it's, you no, know, it is renewed. You, you, you start over again. But the thing is, you don't want to take God's grace and mercy for weakness. Amen. You know, I, I, I preached a sermon not too long ago called Delivered by Grace, but Tempted by Mercy. And the thing is, you know, God's grace shines upon us and brings us out of situations. Look at Daniel when he was cast into the lion's den, but he was also doing what God wanted him to do. So as he went through that tribulation, God's grace was shed upon him so that he came out of the lion's den unscathed. Now, see, after that point, Daniel could have went back into the lion's den on his own accord, you know, got the big head. Hey, look what I can do. And surely the lions would have eaten him. Look at the three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They were cast into the fire. But as they were cast into the fire, Jesus was in the fire with them. See, God's grace and mercy was shed upon them. Now, at a different point in time, after this fact, yes, they could have went back into the fire. But surely God's grace and mercy would not have been with them at that point. Amen. See, it's a lot, a lot of times I know we all know someone who's been chemically dependent or on alcohol. And they were able to kick that habit and to kick that thing as God's mercy delivered them. But yet when they went back and say, okay, well, since I'm cured, I'm just going to go and have one drink. I'm just going to go party and smoke a little bit. See, then we tempt God. Because his grace has brought us out of situations. Then when we put ourselves back into that situation, we have now tempted his mercies. In Matthew chapter 9, it states, As Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat, at meat in the house. Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance and see what people fail to realize is Jesus does not have a problem with the sinners he knows that they need help and yet he lets God's mercy rain upon them but see, what the thing is, is that he has a problem with us church folk judging people. See, we need to show the same mercy and grace upon people and the same patience that God shows with us. See, all of us have not been saved and doing the right thing all of our life. But we tend to, when we come around someone who is not talking the way we want them to talk or walking like, or walking the way we need them to walk or dressing, the way we need them to dress or doing what we want them to do, we tend to cast them out. But then your mind needs to take you back. What was I doing? 
before I decided to get my life right? How many times did it take you to get your life right? What were you doing when God asked you to come out of your sin, to come out of your situation and turn to him? So therefore, when we have people in similar situations that we deal with in our lives, family members or friends, loved ones, we have to show mercy and grace upon them because God is showing the same unto us. If we claim to be saved and walking with Jesus, nobody is perfect. So when you step outside of that walk, you may say something you shouldn't have said, done something you shouldn't have done. See, God could just as very well judge you on the spot. But yet he does not because he shows grace and mercy. So we need to be the example of that. Someone steps on your foot, you don't have to get upset. Someone says something to you out of the way, you don't have to get upset. Because you are a child of God. You have some mercy upon them. Shed some grace upon them. You kill them with kindness. In Titus 3, it says, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing and regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. So, what is, so that's showing us right there that we did not deserve when we were in our sin and our diverse lust, to living out the, t the temptation of the flesh. God yet cared enough for us to keep us. People die every day, people of God. And the thing is, when you leave your home, you may have just had an argument or, some, or something with your loved one or with your mother, your father or, or whomever. And you have those, you know how those thoughts run through your mind. And yet you get in that vehicle and you make it to work safe. You make it back home safe. See, God could choose to, as you have an impure thought, to take you out. But yet his grace and mercy sheds upon you daily. And if you're not a child of God, or, or you're re or not recognizing, I'm sorry, we all are children of God, but if you're not recognizing yourself to be a child of God, I urge you to seek his face. Seek his face. Just pray unto God, what would he have you do? What can you do for him to show you your way that his grace and mercy will continue to abound upon you? Until the next time, be meek and humble. Show grace and mercy unto someone and be the bigger person in the end. God bless you and God keep you. Amen.